middle income, all different levels of wealth, and ask them questions about what did they use to find the advisor that they have, um, or if they're looking for one currently, and then how important was that medium to them. So what you'll notice here, right, is that 41% of people polled of those 1,000 investors ranked Google as the number one place that they go, and it was also the most important. And I think we just really view Google as being an objective place to find information. Um, you know, if you're looking at somebody on LinkedIn or on Facebook, while those obviously got high marks too, Facebook with 20%, LinkedIn with 27%, and they're important to be there. We know that the person putting information out on Google, I'm sorry, on LinkedIn or Facebook is controlling what it says. Whereas if we're searching for somebody on Google, there's going to be both what they put out there, such as their website, as well as other information that we can find. So people are still going to Google many, many times to find information and to find all of you. And so I just thought this study was a really great way for us to get started and show this information. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about SEO in general, some of the basics before we dive into how you can use the editor. So if this is um, you know, something you've never heard before, we can, you know, of course, we're recording this, we'll share this with you. If it's something you have heard before, it's good just to remind you of why it's important before we show you how to make changes. So what you're seeing here on the right hand side of the page is called a SERP, which stands for search engine results page. So whenever you go online and you do a search in this example, I searched for financial advisor Orlando, Florida. This is the list of what you see. And the first thing I want you to note is that the results you get are really based on two main things your previous search history, and where you're physically located at the time you do the search. So those two things are going to dictate the results that you get. And people are really searching a lot differently now than what we used to in the past, right? Especially with voice. A lot of us, raise your hand if you do this, will talk into our phone for something we're looking for, right? So if you are best burger restaurant near me or, um, you know, best plumber, um, that's very, very common that people will do that and they'll want to find something and they'll, what we do, they'll do what we call a long tail keyword search. So instead of just searching for financial advisor in Orlando, Florida, they'll search about a problem they have, such as, you know, can capital gains push me into a higher tax bracket? You want to be the person who comes up when they do those search searches. And so the type of content that you have on your page is what's going to dictate whether or not you do come up. So once they get this list of results here, the number one organic result, so in this case it would be this American Financial Advisors, it's gonna get 33% of all the clicks. The top three, so in this case, American Financial Advisors, um, Algin, and Edward Jones, organic, you can see there was no ad next to them, they're gonna get 61% of all the clicks and less than 6% of people will even make it to page two. Now in our industry, paid listings get less than 10% of the clicks, which is why I don't tell advisors to spend a ton of money on Google, Google ads. Um, I think you can really do great things with Facebook ads and with retargeting, but just the true ad that you see up here in this industry where people are not searching for a product, we're not e-commerce based, where somebody's searching Nike shoes and then Nike gives them an ad and they click on it, we're instead searching for a service. And often we don't even know what we want when we're doing those searches. The paid listings are seeing a lot less traffic. Okay, so um, just one other big thing to note is that there's really two main elements that make up the SEO of your website. So we can divide these into on-page and off-page factors. So the on-page content is what is your site all about? How is it structured? What, did you, what do you have as the content that is written on the page? What's your site map, all of your pages called? Basically the way the site is built and what's written on it is the on-page elements. And this makes up about 40 to 50% of the formula. The other half, but a little bit more, is the off page factor. So these are things such as how authoritative does Google see your site being? So do you provide high quality information? Do the blogs you write provide value? Do you have a lot of other places online linking back to your website or your blogs? So that would give you higher domain authority. 
So those off-page elements make up a very large portion of your SEO. We at 20 over 10, when we're setting your website up, if we're designing the site for you and writing the copy, we take care of those on-page factors initially. But you still need to do the off-page things in order for your site to continue to rank high, right? So it's not enough just to have our team set it up. Every time you add a new blog post, you want to make sure that you're continuing to add keywords in the right places. You also need to worry, or not worry, but you need to work on building backlinks, and we'll talk about that in a second. So today what I'm showing you in the app and what you can do in our 20 over 10 software is all the on-page stuff. When you go in there to look at it after today's call, you'll notice that a lot of it has already been filled out for you if you worked with our team on different packages. And if it isn't, I'm gonna show you how you would wanna fill it in. But then I'll give you what the next steps are in order to do the other part of this percentage, which is the off-page factors. So at a glance, these are the different components that make up those two ends of, this, of the formula. So the on-page is writing good content that contains your keywords, optimizing your title tags, linking within your own content, ensuring your site is mobile friendly, and also secure optimizing your URL structure and making sure you've optimized for both the search engine and the end user. Then the off page things again are things that we don't um, handle on our platform. Some of these things we do help you with accomplish through our SEO package, which we can talk about at the end, um, but building backlinks. Um, social media is a great one that sends a lot of backlinks to your site. Setting up and optimizing Google My Business and then getting yourself featured on guest blogs are all ways to get more links back to your site and get a higher domain authority. And that's all stuff separate, right, from the 20 over 10 platform. All right, so let's dive in here. And I'm gonna just do this. So in the 20 over 10 app, um, once you're signed in, and you guys can even log in with me if you want in your sites right now so that you can follow along, you're going to log in, and when you log in, this is what you should see. So your website should be right here. This is a demo site that I have pulled up, and then all of the pages should be over on the left-hand side. So I'll give you a minute here right now if you want to go ahead and log into your site. Um, so that you can know that you can follow along and do this in real time with me. But we're going to start by talking about the on-page techniques on the left-hand side here, right? So the first thing that we wanna talk about is making sure your site is mobile friendly and secure. The good news is you don't have to do anything with this. Just by virtue of your site being on 20 over 10's platform, it's gonna be mobile optimized and it's gonna be secure. And those two things do impact your ranking. So we take care of that for you. The nice thing is I don't even need to educate you about it. You know it's just done. Um, it, We've taken care of it for you. So one thing that we can move on from. Now, with the keywords, um, keywords would just be what are things you want to rank for? So do you want to rank for somebody searching financial advisor Orlando, Florida, like I showed you, or maybe financial planner Annapolis, Maryland? There's lots of different keywords that you might want to rank for. I know a lot of you will ask me, well, I want to rank for whatever people that I want to do business with are searching for. So how do I find that out? There's a couple different ways you can do it. An easy way is just to go to Google. So, okay, we have it right here. And we can type in something like, um, let's see, business session planning. Right, so as we type that in, when we get down here, see where it says people um, also ask? You can see other kinds of questions that people are searching for that you might want to include in your content because they're popular searches. So you can start clicking on these. How do you develop a business succession plan? And as you choose different types of content that's interesting to you, you'll see Google will give you even more options that are related to the one that you um, chose. Additionally, at the very bottom of the page, you'll see searches related to business, business succession planning. And now you can see other queries, right? So small business succession planning best practices. And as we scroll down, again, it will give us even new ones. So this is a really good way to start. It's not gonna tell you which of these terms are the most popular or getting the most queries, but it's a good place to start. Once you've done that, if you wanna get even more granular, the next suggestion I would have would be Google's Keyword Planner. 
So Google's Keyword Planner is a free tool that you can use that will help you figure out how many people are um, searching for any term and how competitive it is in your area or by term. So you sign up here, you go to Google Ads actually to sign up for it. It's free to create an account and then you just can use the tool. You don't actually need to be paying for ads in order to use it. So Amanda's linking to a blog post that we have all about how to use Google Keyword Planner as a beginner. This is a great place to start if you're looking for some help on figuring out what those keywords are um, that you want to rank for, right? So you can see in this image here, maybe you can't see it too well, um, but fiduciary near me versus fiduciary financial advisor versus fiduciary advisors near me. And it will tell you how many monthly searches there have been, how high the competition is. And then if you did want to bid on it as an ad, what you'd have to spend. But you can use this information to update your website with those keywords in the editor. Okay, so now where should we put those keywords, right? This is really important. So the first place you want to put them is in what's called a title tag. So again, if we search for something online and we get a list of results, the purple or blue text, it starts blue and then it's purple once you click it, that is actually the title tag of the website. And many people don't realize that they can dictate and control what this says. The reason that this is important is because it's the second most important ranking factor that Google uses to determine what your site's about and where it should rank you in the search engine result page. So there is a formula we want all of you to use, and you can see what that formula is down here. So it's, get that to go away, uh, primary keyword, secondary keyword, and then company name in those orders, right? So you can see in the first example, we have Carlsbad, California is the primary keyword. They wanna be really, really um, strategic about ranking in their local area. Then fiduciary financial planner is that secondary keyword or phrase and then their company name, Labor and Wealth. So for you, it might be financial planning for physicians, fee-only advisor, Russell Investments, right? whatever it is that you want to rank for. That is the order in which you wanna do it. Now, each of the title tags should be unique for every page on your website. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here in 20 over 10's app. One caveat. The only time you would want to put your company name first on the homepage title tag would be if you've really developed a reputation because you have a really well-known podcast or a video webinar or a radio show or you wrote a book or something. Every once in a while, we do come across somebody whose name that, you know, they've built a brand around that name in their local area through maybe like a radio show. That's the example here with Man We Financial. And in that case, the company name would go first. But for most of you, you're trying to get prospects and leads who maybe have never heard of you before. You know, you're not on the radio all the time. So you want people just to find you when they're searching things online. Then you would use the formula where that primary keyword would come first, then the secondary keyword and your company name last. So let me show you how to do this in the app. And if anyone has any questions about where this shows up or anything like that, um, please let me know. I'm just gonna go back one more time and show you. So again, what we're talking about is editing this. This about keyword planner, Google Ads help, Google support. How to use Google Keyword Planner in 2019. These are all title tags. So we're going to talk about how you edit your title tag. So you're gonna come here into the page settings. So choose the page you wanna edit. So in this case, we're gonna choose home click on this little page settings gear icon. And now all of your settings are gonna show up. Right here, it says Orlando, Florida, financial planner, Russell Wealth, right? So that is where you would go in and edit your title tags for that particular page. Does that make sense, everyone? Um, if you have any questions, again, please let us know. If you're not sure about you know, which keywords that you should use, um, think about what's, again, le more appropriate for you to be competing in, right? So usually locally, you have a better chance of ranking than just across the whole country. So a lot of people do their local keyword first. So for instance, if you're a financial planner focusing on physicians in Philadelphia, you might have Philadelphia PA, financial planning for physicians, and then your company name. 
rather than financial planning for physicians first. However, if you're really a virtual practice, you don't have just one location, then you can put that niche in um, the title tag first. Now, as I mentioned, you don't want to put your title tag the same one on every page. So we use that for the home page, but when we come down to the wealth management page, we should have a completely different title tag on this page. So as you add new pages, as you create landing pages, as you write blog posts, you're gonna have a title tag for every single one of those. So for instance, on this wealth management page, we wouldn't want to write Orlando, Florida financial planner. Um, you know, we might, depending on what it is that your services offer, you might do like evidence, Based investing, um, and then you know whatever your name of your company is. So you can use some sort of keyword that represents what it is about that page. So I'm just going to pull up another example here. Um, so let's say we searched for this labrum wealth. Um, you can see sometimes Google will pull in some of those other pages, and sometimes they won't. So in this case, they have. Um, some of the name of the company and then their page, their sub pages. Let me do another one that would make more sense. Okay, here we go. So you can see all of the different sub pages have their own title tag and they're separate and unique to that page. If we go to 20 over 10, we have our title tag and then all of these are separate, right? So you don't want to put the exact same title tag on all of them over and over and over again. Uh, somebody's asking, should you restrict title tags to a certain number of characters? Yes, 50 to 60 characters is what you want to use. Now, one other thing to note, if you are blogging regularly, the good news is with the blog posts, on your actual blog page, you'll create your title tag. But then anytime you add a new blog post, so you come here to manage posts, and you click on any one of these, let's say you're gonna add in a new posts from original content. Once you title your post, that will also be the title tag online. So you don't need to recreate this, it will just use whatever the title of your blog post is as the title tag, if that makes sense. So you know, if the title of your blog post is five tips, um, for retirees about taking social security for the first time. That would actually be what would come up in Google search. So for the blog posts, as you add them, you want to think about the keywords and what people are searching for, but whatever you title the post is actually will also what will show up in the feed. Um, somebody's asking about the company name. Great question. So in 20 over 10's editor, we have added in the back end, so under site settings, when your site is first set up by us, we will put your site title here. So you actually don't need to do the hyphen company name on all of the pages. You only need the primary and the secondary keyword because we'll add hyphen whatever your company name is on all of the pages. Now, whether or not that actually shows up on all of them, it, it doesn't always. Google is selective sometimes in what it chooses, but you don't have to worry about it. We've already added it there for you. So again, what I mean by that is, in here, you actually wouldn't have to write Russell Wealth. It will just be added for you as an extension because the system is set up that your company name that you add in the site settings, we put at the end of every browser page title. Okay, so let's move on to um, meta descriptions. So meta descriptions are the gray text that goes underneath the title tag and the URL. So what you really wanna think about with meta descriptions is think of it as ad copy. So it's what compels someone to click on your result or not in the search engine result page. So in the first example, you can see Clarity Asset Management is a fee-only financial planning and asset management firm in Ames, Iowa. As a fiduciary team, we work together for your benefit, blah, 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 right? So that's a, that's a perfectly good meta description, but juxtapose that with the second one. Hi, I'm Kyle Moore. I help busy and motivated professionals take their finances to the next level with ongoing guidance and accountability. It's much more of a here is what I do for people like you. Here's a solution I provide for a problem you have. So I always like to try to think about meta descriptions. Why is it worth my time or why would it be worth someone else's time to click on this 
in the search engine and read it. So if you have an article about five tips for taking social security at the, the right time, and that's what people see here, five tips for taking social security at the right time, underneath it you might say, it can be overwhelming to know whether you're leaving any money on the table when deciding when to take social security. We've got five tips to make sure that you nail it, or you might not wanna say make sure for compliance, but five tips to help you make the right decision or something along those lines, right? So think of it as ad copy. You wanna keep these 120 to 150 characters long, and let me show you in the app where you would edit these. So on your page settings, if you just scroll down to SEO and it says description, that's the meta description and where you put it. So again, really easy. And again, these should also be unique to every page. So the meta description you use for your home page should be different than the meta description you use for your about page or team page or financial firm page. So this is where that meta description for SEO should go. Um, someone asked, are title tags also uh, what is seen on the tab? Yes, that is a great question. So, you know, if you go to 20over10.com, you see where you can hover over this and it pops up there in that little gray box, 20 over 10 websites for financial advisors. That is the title tag. So that's exactly right. What shows up there? You'll often see people who have never set this up, it'll just say home there. That's because they never edit it. You want to make sure that you've um, edited it correctly. And so you should have that right there at the top. And that's another great way to, to look at the title tag of anybody's company is to open up their page and you can hover over it and we'll give it to you. Okay, header tags. So header tags are in the app. If you've ever edited content in the app, it's what makes certain, um, content or words really big and bold, it's, sty it's a styling tool, but it also tells the search engine something. So if you have a big wall of text on your page, but certain things, like in this example, fee-only, forward-thinking wealth management serving Akron, Ohio, is the biggest, boldest text on the page. That tells Google those words are the most important in telling me what this page is about. Remember, Google is crawling the whole internet daily, to find out when new content has been added, if things have been changed, and what that page is all about so that they can then index those pages appropriately. So when someone is ser searching Akron, Ohio, fee-only wealth management, this page is gonna have a much better opportunity to show up because it's told Google that that's what it's all about. So you want to incorporate header tags throughout your site. It's a good practice just for breaking up your content, but it's also good for the search engine and you wanna keep them 55 to 65 characters long. So again, in order to do that in the app, you would go to any of your content that you want to edit. So let's say we come here to the wealth management page. And right here, when we first select that, you can see it right now is chosen as an H3. You can play around with the sizing. So the bigger the header, um, the more important you're saying it is, but you want to balance how big of a header you choose with also the style and the design, right? So I know my design team here who's worked so diligently to set up all your sites would cringe if they thought you were all going in and changing the um, header sizes of all of your content. I'm sharing this with you so that really as you're blogging, you can go in and use these different headers to break up your blog and put keywords into the blog that are important for you. Or if we've already designed your site, you can add even more keywords into certain areas. So let's say we'd already designed the site for you. Turning that to an H1 looks really bad. So let's put it back to an H3, but let's go ahead and say, right, we can add in some keywords here that we want to be found for. Or planning for, helping women in Austin, Texas plan for retirement, right? So you can put the keywords in the headers throughout the text. Just make sure that when you're adding them, whatever it is that you have here should be a key summarization of what you're talking about in the text below it. So Google knows if you're trying to play the system. So you don't want to say key portfolio management factors here but then not talk about what those factors are at all below it, right? So you want the, the text to align with the paragraph text underneath it. 
think that's pretty self-explanatory. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Okay, the last one that I want to mention here, or I guess I have two more, is internal links. So internal links are when you're on a page and you're reading, and then you see the, the hyperlink text and it takes you to another page on a website. So if you're reading a blog post that 20 over 10 wrote about um, best practices for inbound marketing and we talk about email and social media and all these things, and then you click the email marketing page and it takes you to another blog post we wrote about email marketing. That's an internal link between pages on our site. One of the worst things you can do as a website owner is have what we call orphan pages. So this is a page where nothing links to it and it doesn't link out to anything else. And why this is bad is number one, when Google's crawling your website, the way that it indexes it is it sees like a web what's connected to what. So if you have a page about inbound marketing and you link to a page about email marketing, social media and landing pages, it's telling the search engine that all of these things are connected. They all are part of each other. If you have a page about um, tax strategies, and then you have another page about the appropriate time to pull you know, your IRA distributions, that's also related to like a tax strategy, and you don't link those two together, the search engine has a much harder time knowing that those two pages are connected to each other and you're losing some of your SEO juice. So you always wanna have at least two links for every page that you have on your site. So you can go through page by page on your website and look at this. So creating those links is really, really simple. So here on this page, you can see we don't have any links. Let's say we wanna go in and link from the, um, investment portfolio page here under wealth management to another page on uh, tax strategies. Let's pretend, what is the, uh, we'll just say. Right, so we wanna take this word tax strategy and we wanna link it to this other tax strategy page on our site. So first you need to make sure that your um, site, the, the link that you're doing is not the demo link, but it's the actual um, live link, right? So you come to your website, you find that page, you get the link, you're just gonna copy it. So I just did a control command C, and then you're gonna come here into your editor, you're gonna select the text that you want to link, and up here on the hyperlink, you're gonna click insert link. Now you're gonna copy that link in there. And I always like to have it open in a new page so people can easily go back where they, where they want to go. And that's it, you're gonna insert it. And now it's linked. So anytime someone clicks on that, it's gonna open them up in that page. The other thing you can do, especially on your blog posts, I'm gonna go ahead and save that so that we have it. If you come in here to your blog and you click on one of your posts, at the bottom, of any of your blog posts, it's a great idea to add a call to action, right? Something that compels somebody to book a time on your calendar or to read another blog post that you have. So an easy way to do this is through links, right? So let's just say, um, we'll say want more help or ready or one on one help with Online. So we can make this nice and big, we can center it on the page, and then we can make it bigger. And then we can have a little call to action that says, uh, chat with us. So now we can hyperlink this button. Uh, hyperlink, there we go. And pretend this is my calendar link. So I'm gonna link to calendly.com or I'm gonna link to um, a booking page, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert it. Once I've linked that page, what I can do is first you have to link it, but then you can come here to style, click the style button and then click button. And now we've made that a button. So anytime somebody clicks on that, it can take them to your calendar. You can take it to another page of your site. So let's say we had a, a connect with us page. And we just wanted to link them here. You could hyperlink that. Whatever it is that you wanna send them to, 
but having a uh, call to action on the bottom of your page, it creates an intro link, but it also um, is a nice way to get somebody to take that next step. Sometimes you might want to not compel them to get started, but um, you know, to read another blog post that you have. And so you could say something like, you know, want more tips on social security? Here's three good articles that we suggest, right? And you could link to them there. So that's a really great way to end a blog post, but always have some sort of call to action there at the bottom. Okay. Um, let's see. Do draft pages counting and choose orphan pages? No. So what, what the question is, um, let me just save this, go back. On any of 20 over 10's pages, you can see here where it says inactive. This just tells us which of the pages are currently set to not actually oops, um, be like publishable. So if we come here to the page settings up here, active, it says no. So this allows you to work on a page over time and send all the other pages to publish or for compliance review. And even if they all get approved and your site gets published, that page itself would not be published. So it does not count against you because it's not active on the internet yet. So you could have as many of those inactive pages as you want in draft mode, same thing with blog posts, and they will not count against you. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. The same thing, um, the only, this kind of the same thing, but a little bit differently with landing pages. So the landing pages are down here on the left, right? So you might have an events page or something like that. For those pages, you're not trying to get those pages boosted for SEO, so you don't need to worry about the interlinking. Um, sometimes people will link to an event from their homepage or something like that, and you can. One thing sometimes does confuse people is how do I get the link for that landing page? So what you actually wanna do is go to your website and then copy the URL for that page. So for instance here, we have the Lunch and Learn Estate Planning 101. So we would copy that. If we go back to the Fresnel site, this is our main Fresnel page. We actually need to put the URL slug in there. And, okay. <laughs> and then it will come up. Sorry, I'm on the wrong uh, demo account, but that's how you get it. So, um, I think Amanda, we have a support article you could add in there, but you wanna copy that URL and then added it. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. So somebody's asking, their site was created by 20 over 10 and they're in there right now and they see their company name is not in their site title. So again, um, remember, if you want your company name to be at the end of every page, then yes, you should put it in there as the site title unless your site title is being used as your logo and for some reason you um, don't want what's there displayed. So what I mean by that is, you can see here in the settings, you can either choose to have an image be displayed or text. We have text in this one, so if it's not an actual logo, it's text, so that's what's being displayed. If you had it set to image, um, then it doesn't matter what your site total, title says for what's gonna appear, it's just gonna be what's on the extension of every single page. Okay, um, any other questions, keep them coming. One other thing I just wanna show you is if we go back to that succession, you know, um, business, or here we'll do succession planning for business owners. If somebody does a search like this and then were to click on images, you can actually find, you know, different things. And if you click on one of them, it can take you to somebody's website just based on the image. So if you wanna use this to your advantage and be found more for image search, there is a way to do that as well. And that's called alt tags. So an alt tag is, stands for alternative text. And it was actually first initially developed as a way for people who um, have different disabilities and they need the, uh, maybe if they can't see as well. And so when they hover over something, it will tell them what that picture is all about, um, verbally or through uh, the text. So for instance, here, Lighthouse, right? We would wanna put in here, the alternative text would be Lighthouse. If you have a page all about business succession planning or tax strategies, and you have pictures in there of people meeting to discuss taxes, you could label the image, 
meeting to discuss tax strategies for business owners, right? And that by putting those keywords in the alternative text box, you have the ability to improve your SEO ranking for those images. So Amanda just added that in and um, that gives you more info on how to do that. Can we use an animated logo? Yes, you can. Um, although I don't recommend that you do just because a lot of the research we've done on the five second test, um, if you've never heard of this before, it's a great tool that you can use. Um, let's pull it up here on our blog, which is you show somebody uh, your website and then you, ask, you let them look at it for five seconds and then you ask them a series of questions. We find that when there's an animated logo, a lot of times it distracts people from understanding what the company name ultimately is. And you really want in just five seconds people to be able to understand the name of your company, the services you provide, and who you serve. So I don't actually suggest the animated logo for those reasons. Okay. Great questions, everyone. Um, so now the things... Um, that you can do from the blogging perspective. So I mentioned that when it comes to the different SEO elements, when you work with our design team, our copy team, when you have a website with us, we're really taking care of those on-page things, right? But in order for you to continue to rank well and really drive traffic, you need to do the second half, which is the off-page techniques. So that's things like setting up and optimizing a Google My Business account, setting up and optimizing social media pages and posting to social media regularly creating content that can be shared and building backlinks. So uh, there are certain things you can already do in our platform. And the number one thing that we do to provide help with this is through our content assist product. So again, I'll show that to you here um, and how I suggest people use it. So if you come to your blog and you click manage posts and you click add new, of course you can add original content or you can click content assist. So original content would be you writing an article from scratch and uploading it. Content assist is you choosing one of the ghost written pieces from our library and then editing it. So when you come into content assist, you're gonna look at all these different topics. So let's say you want to choose one specifically for uh, how do pensions work if you're self-employed. So we're gonna go ahead and add that post, but we're gonna edit it. So let's say I'm from Cleveland. We want to do something like this. Clevelanders, how do pensions work if you're self-employed, right? And then you come down here. The whole article is already written for you with all the header tags and everything, but you want to start adding in something like, um, you know, over the last 15 years working with so many business owners and self-employed individuals throughout Northeast Ohio, blah, blah, blah. So you can start coming in here and adding in different keywords, phrases, content that's specific for your audience or the group of people you're trying to meet and reach with this content. So whether you use the ghost written articles or if you're uploading your own original content completely, you want to be adding new content to your website at least twice a month. We've done a lot of research and studies and that's what we found is really the sweet spot for advisors who are seeing the most SEO performance and leads from their website is twice a month. So it's every other week. It's not that terribly time consuming, especially if you use the content assist um, feature library. Um, if you want help with the other things, so I mentioned as social media, driving traffic through backlinks, all that other stuff. Um, we have two ways that we can help. So the first is our SEO package. So it was at the bottom of that, how to the Google Keyword Planner. It's also on our website. But our um, SEO package is something that Amanda helps people with. It's our SEO essentials. And you will get our team to actually help you set up Google Search Console, Google Analytics, verify your Google uh, Map business listing, submitting your site map, a lot of the more technical things um, we will take care of, as well as um, going back through your website. And so let's say you launched your website with us a year ago, but you've been making changes and edits and you added pages, we'll go back through and look at your title tags and build internal links and do all that good stuff for you. So that's $800 one-time fee. Um, and it includes a 30 minute consultation, or I'm sorry, a 30 minute call at the end. So we do an intake form for consult, we do a review, 
And then at the end, we also share with you what we did and how we suggest you continue to build on that over time. So instead of an ongoing thing, it's a one-time fee. Um, so that's always worthwhile if you're interested. We actually kind of put a limit on how many we do just because we only have so much staff here. Um, so there sometimes is a little bit of a um, lag in how many we can do at a time. But if you're interested, that's where you would go to learn more about that. SEO Kickstarter under pricing and add-ons. Um, you can see all of those listed there. Okay, somebody's asking, twice a week is the sweet spot of how often to blog. Is there a point of diminishing returns? Um, I would say I've not seen a point of diminishing returns. I don't think I know any advisor who's going crazy with content marketing, honestly. If you're using content assist content though, you shouldn't just go and deploy 20 pieces without editing any of them, right? That's not gonna give you the ROI you want. You do need to go in and make changes. What we found at 20 over 10 with our own blog is a sweet spot for us is five times a week. So we blog Monday through Friday, almost every day. Of course, there's weeks when that doesn't happen, but five times a week is a sweet spot. One thing we do that I think is great that a lot of you could do, if you're really struggling to come up with original content and you wanna build backlinks, Every Monday, we do a five little things for your Monday roundup where we will look at articles we think would be beneficial for all of you to read in the, in the world of, of marketing as an advisor. And so we'll find those articles, give you a quick recap of what it's about, and then link out to them. And what we'll find a lot of times is we'll then share it on social media and these people that we're tagging, right? So Stephen Worshing here, if we you know tweet this, five little things for your Monday roundup featuring boom, boom, boom. He'll say, oh, that's great. I'm featured in that. And he'll retweet it or reshare it or even put it on his blog. And so that's building a backlink to our website that's going to help us get boosted. But it's also just a great, great way to add original content to our, webs to our website's blog um, so that we're keeping the search engine happy. So this is a great strategy to use. You know, you might find articles from real estate agents or estate planning attorneys or a local conservation trust in your community. You know, the, the sky's the limit in what you could use. And maybe you only do it once a month, not every week, but just by putting this together, then when you go to share it on social media, you can tag all the people you featured. And most of the time they will at least comment or like it. Often they will reshare it as well. So that's the great strategy that you can all use. Um, so we do have a new product that we're going to be um, announcing uh, just in a couple weeks for all of our current clients. So for those of you um, that have been on a webinar where I've talked about it in the past, you may have heard of it. It is called Lead Pilot, and it is going to help take care of those other off-the-page factors that we mentioned. So this is the website you can go to. It's a separate um, product from 20 over 10 in the sense that you actually don't have to be a 20 over 10 customer to use it, but it will help with all of your inbound marketing needs. So everything you need in one place, right? So content creation, landing pages, social media scheduling, email marketing. We're going to announce this in February of 2020 at the T3 advisor conference, but for our 20 over 10 current website customers, you will all be invited next week or the week after, depending, um, we're kind of put it in waves, to get early access to this product. And there'll be demos and info sessions you can learn about, but this will help with that second half of the SEO equation. It will help you post more to social media to build backlinks. It will help you with um, you know, the branded landing pages. It will help with email marketing and accomplishing that and all of your automated campaigns. It integrates with the CRMs people are already using and Riskalyze, um, it is really the platform that we said so many advisors want help implementing their inbound marketing strategy. And up until now, we've just been able to give them resources to say, here's what you should do, but we didn't provide the tools. And now we're so excited to have the tool for you to use. So keep an eye on your inbox. You'll be getting an invite about that in the coming weeks. And all of our 20 over 10 website customers will get a significant discount if they sign up before hard launch. So if you sign up from the time you get the email until I think it's February 15th, so you'll have about 60 days or so, um, you will get a significant, significant discount, I think like 50% off of what the list price will be. So more information will be coming um, to you about that soon. Um, but it's really, one of our early test users said, it's like the HubSpot 
of marketing for advisors, but without being overly complicated. So it's a very easy to use system. I highly um, suggest you at least check out a demo of it, which you'll be invited to soon. So in the meantime, that's how you use 20 over 10's editor to boost your SEO strategy, produce new content at least twice a week, make sure you're linking from every page on your site and blogs, linking out to at least one and adding a link from something you already have to that blog post and make sure you're going back and looking at your page titles and your meta descriptions to include the keywords you want to use with that primary keyword, secondary keyword, and then company name formula. I hope this was helpful for all of you. If there are other tutorials that you would love for us to teach, whether it's how to build a great landing page or how to spice up your team page or write great bios, um, we're always open to suggestions and would love hearing anything that we can help um, teach you on how to use the platform to accomplish more with your marketing. So feel free to drop the ideas in the chat now or um, you know, send us an email at marketing at 20 over 10 um, in order to do that. Uh, yes, you will get all of the slides sent to you and where to get the logo again. So yes, so under the site settings, let me just show you that one more time. On the bottom left-hand corner, site settings, that's where you have your logo, your navigation, your colors, your fonts, all of that good stuff. And up here, you can either do your logo as an image and upload your logo or do a text-based version of it. One other thing, actually, I forgot to point out, Google Analytics is a great place for those of you wondering how your site's performing already to find information. So you should always come down here to integrations because some of you I know create your own websites on our platform and under Google Analytics, you can check whether or not you have your tracking code in here. If you don't have a code in there, you want to get it added ASAP um, because that's really the data that will tell us how many site visitors you're getting, how good of traffic you're getting, or the, where the people are finding your website. And it will give all of that to you too. Um, this has been something that's been requested by a lot of people, which we'll do a webinar soon, is how to look at your Google Analytics and know how your site's performing. But under our blog, um, we have one from last year that you can go to um, this webinar replay right here that will also walk you through all of that that's still up to date and got tons of great useful information. So definitely um, check that out if you weren't able to attend that one. And that's a good place. Additionally, I just wanna point out, because I know these quick tips are so helpful for a lot of you, our YouTube channel, um, if you go to 20 over 10 websites for financial advisor, advisors, every week we release a new three to five minute video that just got a quick tip for you. So for instance, um, one week ago, I actually talked about those key performance indicators to help you benchmark your success. So how many um, website visitors is the average advisor getting? How many are bouncing away? How many leads is the average advisor getting? So you can subscribe to our channel and you'll get notified every week when we drop a new one of these that will give you lots of tips and tricks as well. Um, yeah, I think that's all the questions. If we have any more, certainly put them in. Um, thanks for spending this hour with me before the holiday. I hope you all have a fantastic Thanksgiving break. And if there's anything we can do to be more helpful to you and your business and your marketing, please let us know. We are so thankful for all of you choosing 20 over 10 for your websites. So thank you all and have a great holiday.